You are listening to the Sarah High School Podcast, your connection to the scholars, the athletes, the men of faith, the men of humility, the Sarah Padres. Hello and welcome to the Sarah High School Podcast. Hello. We are here today with Joe Murphy, Sarah's new music director, who actually started just this year. We're really happy to have you here today. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, definitely. Well, wonderful. Well, I have known you forever, which is great, from um, the St. Charles Parish in San Carlos. Yeah. And I've always watched you in church, and you um, you do all the music with your lovely wife, Sarah. And um, so I was so excited when you came here to Sarah to bring your talents um, after being at TL for, what, 14 years? Is that right? Yeah, actually a little bit longer. I was at TL Atlanta for 16 years. For 16 yeah. years. Yep. Awesome. And so tell me a little bit about um, about your, your experience, your background, what drew you to music, and um, what got you here? Yeah, well, I've been, I, I've wanted to be a music teacher pretty much my whole life, as long as I can remember. Um, and that was based not just on my love for music, um, but also just my visions for what I would do with a program if I had my own program. Uh, I had really great music educators growing up, um, but I would also challenge some of the things that they were doing, even at a younger age, and say, like, I wish that we could do this or do this. And, and so... I knew that I would want to have my own program at some point, um, but then sort of not knowing the landscape of going to college as a music major, I went in as a performance major. So I have my degree in tuba performance from Cal State Northridge, um, where I had some of the greatest teachers on earth are all down there in LA. Um, my teacher, Doug Tornquist, is probably the top studio tuba pro right now in Los Angeles, and that wow. was who I got to work with privately for an hour a week for four years. Um, and my other professors down there are world renowned. And so I, I just got a wonderful education. And a woman came into our uh, pedagogy class one day and said, we'd like um, some of you to come out and make a few bucks an hour and, um, and teach some kids after school. Like they wanted to do small groups of tuba players and trumpet players and it's called chamber music. They wanted us to do chamber ensembles. And how old were you at this point? Was this I was in college? Okay. Yeah, I was 20 years old. And and I went and I got really serious about it. And my group kept showing up every week and it was growing and they were telling their friends and a lot of the other groups were dwindling and it and it wasn't going as well. And so that that director, her name's Susan Hamry, she realized that um, that she wanted to have me on board more um, more permanently. So she hired me as a part-time assistant band director, um, which I held that position for five years. Um, awesome. Which was wonderful. So that's where I really got to learn uh, a lot about teaching music in the classroom, but also how to run music festivals and how to book travel and how to, you know, order marching uniforms and all that stuff that, you know, there's so much that goes into being a music director. It's not, I wish it was just the teaching sometimes, but it's organizing trips and transportation and clothing and all that stuff. So. Exposure, yeah. performance, I mean, Exposure. there's so much. Um, so I, she really, really helped get me going in that. And then same thing happened. I sort of had the differences that I wanted to do my own way. And after five years, it kind of just came to a head where it was like, it's time for me to, uh, to do this on my own. And um, I had spoken to my wife about how I'd seen some jobs up here in Northern California, but she's from Southern California. Uh, and we just had our first kid and it was her idea to say, why don't we move up to Northern California and we'll move in with your dad. We can rent a house and we can, um, you know, if you get one of those jobs, let's go. So I flew up here and interviewed at Tierra Linda and South City High School in the same day. And Tierra Linda called me back the next day and offered the job. And uh, yeah, and it was funny because it was back in the day when you could still use a cell phone in the car, like holding it. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I was actually on a, a telephone, telephone interview driving like a semi big rig with drum equipment to a marching band event and talking on the phone, doing an interview. And then I see the call waiting as Tierra Linda. I'm like, oh, I need to answer that. Like, I really want that job, but I'm in an interview literally. So um, yeah, anyway, got got to the gig, um, called Tierra Linda back and, and they asked me not to take anything else. And, and so it worked out. And the rest is history. Well, I want to get to that history, but I, yeah. I actually, am, I'm always curious, like as a, as a child, did you grow up in a musical family? Like what was, how yeah. did you first you know, find out that you have a love of yeah. music. Well, I, you know, I, I didn't realize it was so different from other families until I probably went to college and, and would tell other people about my musical upbringing. They're like, oh my gosh, that's like not, that's not normal. That's crazy. 
Um, and it was not classical. It definitely was not tuba. It was not band. It was rock and and um, progressive rock and, and music like that. So um, between my father, who um, has over 4,000 CDs. And, 4, and is 000, a Sarah alum, sorry. And a, yes, 1971. <laughs> um, I put that in there. Yeah, he... Um, he was a CD collector. He'd always say like, you know, I, I went to Tower Records to get tickets to go see Bob Dylan and I ended up spending $200 extra because he'd buy like 12 CDs or whatever. That's amazing. And so um, he's got 4,000 uh, 4, records. He's a huge music collector. He loves progressive rock, um, King Crimson, Peter Gabriel type of music. Um, and I never really appreciated that growing up. It was like, oh, that's my dad's hippy dippy music. And right. Really. Um, and then on my mom's side of the family, um, she sang, they actually met at folk mass in church. Um, and then my mom would sing and my uncle played guitar and they would always play rock stuff like classic rock, Rolling Stones, um, Brian Adams, like Brian Adams. Yeah. Brian, yeah, Adams, Brian Adams. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. And, um, summer of, uh, summer 69. 69 yeah. Yep. And so we would like every get together at my uncle's house, he built a studio and we would always have jam sessions. So you jump on something, people get up and sing. We oh, do the wow. rows, we do three part harmony. Like we, and we would, we still do this. Like my uncle Denny, he will at every get together, he just has an acoustic and he's just kind of noodling while talking to that's you. So cool. He just like can't exist without a guitar in his hands. Um, and then that's actually where I would go after school. Um, and uh, you could cut this part out, but I would sometimes go during school uh, to my <laughs> uncle's house across the street. Um, and I would just teach myself instruments. I teach myself guitar and piano and drums. Uh, and I learned how to record myself. He would get recording equipment when it was just switching to digital. So, it was, you know, we blew up a couple computers right. because it wasn't <laughs> ready for what we were putting in. Um, so I think the love of music was there between my father and my mother, my uncle and, and all of that. But um, my mom was even the one to say, like, I had no idea you were actually going to do this. Otherwise, like I would have got you private lessons. I only had five lessons on the tuba before I went to college. Wow. And um, wonderful teacher, his name's Tony Clements. He teaches in San Jose or at Campbell. And he would let me work in his backyard for 30 minutes. Uh, or sorry, for three hours for a half hour lesson. Oh, wow. And so I would, I mean, I, I put new pebbles in his <laughs> chicken coop. I clean, like I, I redid his whole music library. Like, But he was so cool that he knew we couldn't afford lessons um, so I'd pull up there and work for three hours and then he'd, he'd hook it up. And my, my mom was like, I probably would have bought you a tuba. I probably would have got you lessons, but you were doing so many things. You were playing football, you were playing soccer, you were playing all these instruments. How was I supposed to know you were going to decide you wanted to play tuba professionally? So, right. Well, it makes the story so much cooler actually, because yeah. I mean, th there you have it. I mean, you're like self-made. I, I always find those stories to be so great. Yeah. So tell me then how many instruments do you play now? I mean, and you obviously, you know, read sheet music. I mean, tell me yeah. just about what... And, and, and I, I must, you know, as you can tell, I naively don't know much about that's, music. That's okay. Except I like your dad's yeah. type of music. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's okay. Well, um, I was really fortunate growing up that we had summer school classes in Millbrae um, that were free during the summer. And you could take three hours of summer school for six weeks. And we would, um, I'd always take mythology and then I'd take band and then I'd take a thing called Double Your Pleasure, which was for two weeks at a time, you could take a different instrument if you already had played one. Oh, cool. So um, I did that for three summers. So I got to learn nine different instruments in that time. Now, you're only learning it for a couple of weeks, but you also sure. start to find that clarinet and saxophone have a lot of similarities and flute fingerings. And then going from a, a tuba to a trumpet to a baritone, they have a lot of similarities. And then percussion and, and upright bass and stuff. So that's where... I feel I learned tons of different instruments and that was kind of my thing. I loved playing tons of instruments. Um, so, I mean, I played bagpipes at my graduation. I um, have my degree in tuba performance, but I play trombone professionally when hired. Um, I sing a lot and um, I've, I mean, I've played oboe at church. I've done a lot of drum set stuff. I've done guitar stuff. So I, I like to say I will play whatever I'm hired to play That's because amazing. I can figure it out well enough to get by with most easy stuff. Once the music gets really tough, there's probably only a handful of instruments, like the tuba, the baritone, maybe trombone, um, and like a berry sax part, um, I can usually handle pretty well. That's so, some incredible talent. That's very, for very For middle cool. school, well, it came in handy because at Tierra Linda, it's fifth through eighth grade. 
and you start the kids from scratch in fifth grade. And so normally as a music uh, teacher, when you get your ed degree, they make you uh, take methods classes. So you learn how to teach all the instruments. I see. They want to make sure you're not just good at what you're good at. Right. Um, and so I already came in knowing how to play a lot of those instruments. So they actually passed me out of those classes because they saw that I already had the experience. And so um, when I had all these fifth graders, it really helped that I knew how to play these instruments. And now at this school, I know we're, we'll transition to this school, but there's a lot of kids at this school that are coming in without four or five years of experience. They're coming in with maybe one year of experience. So I'm actually finding it useful to have that experience because a lot of high school directors don't have the experience of teaching younger kids. That's right. Um, so they're used to kids who come to them who already know how to play their technique and they focus more on the phrasing and the musicianship. Um, and I'm finding here that it really helps to be able to teach both. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I'm, I can imagine you kind of, you've kind of, you know, graduated into a more, I, I mean, I wouldn't say necessarily say sophisticated because that would be a measure on the musicians themselves. And um, so I, I wouldn't be able to say that, but just in terms of uh, comprehension and, and your maturity, I hope, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sure you have, you know, a much different, I mean, it's kind of been a graduation in terms of like going from younger students to, yeah. you know, a more sophisticated <clears throat> environment. So tell me a little bit about, you know, briefly, if you can, about TL, some of the things you did there and how that helps you now in your new role at Sarah. Yeah, well, um, at Tierra Linda, I think it was nice because um, the first principal that I had there let me kind of roll with my ideas. And she knew I was fresh out of the gate. I was 25 years old. And she knew I just wanted to do everything. She was actually, sometimes she'd have to say like, look, do you understand that if you go and do that really cool thing and it goes really well, you'll have to do this the rest of your life here and you're going to burn out. Like you, can, you can't just do... You can't just go pull off this great concert in this one place with one group and not expect next year's group to want to do the same. So she would try to help me build and scaffold, but not overdo it. Right. It's um, a good leader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so we got to the point, but I, my first year there, I took over for somebody who was a legend at the school. Um, her name's Sarah Lomax and she was phenomenal and she fought to make sure that music was presented the right way. Uh, in the curriculum that it was a class during the day it was a core class and kids had five days a week one hour a day of music it wasn't before and after school extracurricular right, right. I, it was never thought of as an extracurricular at Tierra Linda so that's on her for starting it the right way um, and then when I came in the kids were very loyal and I was still trying to figure out what I was doing you know I was young and I, I even though I could teach all these instruments I hadn't had to teach 50 fifth graders at a time like, how do you teach this kid to put on a reed and this one to, like, stop hitting his neighbor? And, you know, all that stuff. That's a lot of wiggles. It's crazy <laughs> amount of kids, too. I would have 300 different contacts a day. And so, or built to that, at least. And so, um, at Tier Linda, they, they let me kind of go with the vision of what I wanted to do. And so, it started with um, just trying to win over the kids who were loyal to Miss Lomax to try to not, you know, not turn them against her, but, like, have them accept me. Right. So the first year we created this thing called the lock-in and um, a lock-in I had actually experienced at a couple churches where you stay all night and you're not allowed to leave. And that's why you're locked in and you just party and have fun and you stay up 24 hours. And so we did this. We, with the eighth graders, we um, stayed all night. There were only 22 eighth graders and we stayed all night and we played capture the flag from 12 to three in the oh, morning. <laughs> we had, you know, uh, King Kong pizzas delivered from New York pizza at midnight and Tons of junk food. We watched movies. If anybody fell asleep, we messed with them a little bit. Um, and build camaraderie. <laughs> it was a and, lot of fun. Yeah. And it was like this special night that these eighth graders got to enjoy before they went off to high school. And at Tierra Linda, it's kind of a unique situation that since San Carlos doesn't have its own high school, kids go to Carlmont or Sequoia or private school. And they really do almost split in thirds. It's now it's a little bit more straight to Carlmont, but it used to be more split. So these kids really, it was their last night to really hang out as a group. And so we had a blast and then it just became a legendary thing. And then the next group couldn't wait for the lock-in and lock-in. And then next thing you know, we started adding the choir and the orchestra kids. And now all of a sudden we've got 118 kids staying through the night um, doing all these crazy games. And, you know, the neighbors were so sweet. They would like call me and text me and say, we know the lock-ins happen and we love this time of year. Instead of, can you tell them to be quiet? Be quiet, right? <laughs> Even at our principal actually lived across the street and was like, it's a little noisy for two in the morning. <laughs> it was like, okay, if he's hearing us, it's probably not good. 
That's um, funny. And, and, and we added things like the faculty and friends recital where we had a lot of our own faculty and the district faculty um, would play a concert and, um, and raise money for the Disney trip that we'd go on. Um, and then we started taking the kids on a Disney trip. Um, and again, it all started with band and then it would branch out to more. So then we took the orchestra and then we took the choir. Um, and then once we had all three groups, we actually qualified to win like the big awards at the end of the night where if wow. you have the top like three combined scores, you could win the massive trophy. And we won that two or three times over all the high schools too. Which That's was incredible. Wow. So, um, and then, you know, just the culture, it's a music programs are a synergistic cultural thing and um and that is here right now um I, i'm trying to build it back up covid kills a lot of that stuff so um especially music I mean, yeah it's was... just really hard to keep it's it, you just the ball is rolling and it's like to get it started again it needs to get going um, i think you said it once i i, I had the good fortune of interviewing you when you first uh, arrived here at sarah and i yeah. think that um, you had said it was it was so hard to get people motivated to play for themselves when they're used to the energy of an audience. So yeah. I think that 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 you know per, for performers it's, right. that's really difficult. Yeah, yeah, they want to play for other people, and they just had a year at home where they were playing like music's not meant to be played in your room, right? And um, and sung in your room. Like I mean, we sing to ourselves in a shower in the car, but like you don't want to have to sing your choir music to yourself. So they, you're in a choir to be in a choir, and so. Um, but I do find that it's here and I can tap into it because I know it's here with the sports. Like when I first got this job, I thought this was a school where you couldn't get onto the sports teams unless you were the best players. And when I got here, I realized they take all the freshmen in football and the water polo team has a ton of people, kids that I knew from Tierra Linda who were never doing sports were trying sports because at Sarah, you try a sport because that's your way of meeting new friends, camaraderie, um, like instant connection, brotherhood and all that. Definitely. And um, what I'm trying to do is by going to the Padre previews and doing interviews with kids, I'm trying to let them know that the arts are also that place where you explore and try things. And one thing that the arts has kind of over the after school sports is you actually need to take a year of arts for college. Right. Where it's not extracurricular. You actually do need to take a year. So I'm trying to encourage freshmen to come in and Try a year of music or drama or art. Um, and, and a focus year, too. I mean, one that you yeah. enjoy it, that you're interested in. It's not just the checking the box right, for right. college, right? Right. Well, and if the earlier they come in, the more they're going to realize they probably love what they're doing and will want to stay. You know, it's the senior that takes drama for the first time and goes, this is so cool that I feel bad for because they're Our done. buddy Calvin, our buddy Calvin, yes. he did an amazing job yeah. in the spring musical. And he's like, oh, I wish yeah. I did it sooner. Why didn't anybody tell me about this? I'm exactly. Like, oh, he, you know, we tried. So, yeah, yeah. So, so that's, that's, so anyway, Tierra Linda was a great, great place to work. It's the San Carlos community is so supportive of music. They raised enough money that we would never, music was never really on the chopping block. Uh, if it's it ever wonderful. looked like it was, it was just to get people riled up, you know? <laughs> to get more um, funding. Yeah, and, um, and, that, and there's still, you know, I went back to see a concert recently at Tierra Linda, and it's so cool to see. There were probably 300 people in the courtyard at night with lights, and, like, uh, the kids are out there. And so um, I really, I left on great terms with them. Uh, I wasn't expecting to take this job. I was expecting to go back there this year. Um, to work uh, and and love everything about it. So um, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So wonderful. So it sounds like you know T TL gave you such an opportunity to blend your creative, your your experience for starters, your creativity, and your desire to improve a program. And I know that those were some of your goals that you brought here at yeah. Sarah, which is another program that was um, kind of built by the the legendary Jay Jordan, and then Tamara Stevens kind of carried it through until you got here. And so um, can you just tell me about some of the the ways that you're kind of injecting that creativity into this program and maybe about some of the specific classes that you brought? Yeah. Well, I think in, in taking this program, I had to look at um, what was already working, um, what has worked for me in the past, which will not necessarily work here, um, and then where, like just looking specifically at the school, where do we need to go? Where, where would I like to go? Where is it possible to go? And even just having high schoolers, it's a little different because they have to take AP classes and they can't always do four years of your program where they could at the middle school. Mm -hmm. I also, it's taken me a long time to realize how many different levels come in. 
because uh, you have a kid coming from St. Catharines and a kid coming from St. Gregory's. You have a kid coming from the East Bay. You have kids coming from private school, public school. Some kids have taken private lessons for four years and, and performed in the Allstate Bands of California. And some kids have taken a year of flute lessons in their own house and never played with anybody else. So they don't even know what a conductor does or why I'm waving my hand. Right. We have a lot of drummers who have learned drum set in studios and can play amazing rock music. And they're like, what's a tambourine? Like what, you know, <laughs> or what is it trying? How do I hit the triangle the right way? So it really, this job has, it's really cool because I feel like I, I didn't age out of my junior high in a lot of ways. I still get to teach that level to some kids, which I really enjoy. What's really cool is they learn it so much faster though. I mean, the older kids will pick up things a lot faster than fifth graders do. So once I do show them, they, they adjust and, and then it's right in there. So that's been really fun. Um, in creating the program, I, I looked at it and said, we have 55 performing students at this school right now. And is that considered, is that including tri-school or just at no, the boys at Sarah? Just okay. the boys at Sarah. So that is, that's a jazz band, the band and the, um, and the men's choir. Okay. And there's more, if you count, the numbers and add them up, it's more than 55, but there's only 55 different students that are in performing music here. Interesting. And so I said, well, there's 800 kids at this school. And if you count the two girls' schools, we're up closer to like 1,600 kids, and we have 55 performing in our classes. What can we do here? You know, Because at first I was thinking, I'm going to go reach out to all the different uh, middle schools and all that stuff, but I can't control whether a kid wants to I'm, I can be part of why a kid wants to come to Sarah, but ultimately there's, that's a big choice for the family and you know they might already have it that they're going to this school or that school. So that I feel like is a lot of energy in a place where I can't really control. But here I feel like I can build from within because we have 1,600 kids who aren't taking music right now. So how do I get them to come in? And that's, that's what I'm trying to work on. So we are starting a thing called the concert band next year, which is a beginning band. And, um, and so we will have kids who have never played an instrument before or played a different instrument and want to learn a new one. And we'll teach them from scratch. I will teach them like I taught the fifth graders. Awesome. We'll have the beginning book. But I have a feeling instead of taking like a year and a half to go through book one, they'll probably take a half a year because these kids are, you know, picking up so much quicker. And I think I'll be able to catch them up to the symphonic band level after a year. That's the goal. That's amazing. And then they feel like, cool, now we've graduated to the group that travels, to the group that plays the pep band games and plays concerts and um, that's, that's the goal with that group. Um, I also saw the men's choir was sticking around 14, 15, 18 kids, you know, on a really good year would have maybe 20, 22 kids. And I thought, um, if we brought the girls over for that choir, um, could we get maybe even more boys to come out? But also in our trier, in our tri-school choir experience of doing it after school once a week for mm -hmm. an hour and 15 minutes, it's really hard pedagogically to teach the girls coming in. So I find that the boys are learning one level and then the girls come in and they're not getting that same level of education because they only have the one hour. So I really wanted to bring them over so that they can learn to sing better and to pedagogically just, you know, take the class, not the extracurricular. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we're working on for next year. We'll wait to see what the numbers look like and all that. But. Well, you had a really nice performance of the national anthem at the football game um, yeah. during football season, and the pep band was amazing as well. Yeah. So to bring that back was, was, I think, very exciting for the entire community. As you're talking, I'm thinking about all the times that we've brought you up on various podcasts here at Sarah, because oh, we cool. just talked about you, uh, I guess that was yesterday, um, with the... Uh, Fun to dream experience oh, yeah. and, you know, everybody walking in and seeing the band on the way in. That was cool. a really special. Yeah, I think. You made um, a lot of headways, but I mean. Kids, <laughs> yeah, the kids really, in, they, they want to play for people. We have to practice and wait our, wait our time until we've learned our stuff, you know, but they do want to perform. And I feel like the longer they go without performing, the more they wonder if they're in the right class. Right. You know, because, and, and then my teaching style I like to tell a lot of stories. I like to have a lot of fun, but I will also ride the kids if they're not working. So, um, and it's, I don't think it's a culture of this music program, but it is a culture of COVID to not practice and right. get away with stuff. <laughs> and so bringing that back and trying to teach these kids how much they should be practicing at home. Uh, and, and it's not like, you know, it's hard this year. The kids aren't, we're trying to ease them back in, but it's not easy to ease them back in. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, it's been two thirds of a year. We've been back at school. 
it's time for you to get back to like those days when you were like, oh man, I'm working so much. But even right. we as adults are like, you know, after we run our kids around after school to all their sports, we're like, oh, I don't know if I miss this. This is a lot of work, <laughs> <It is. laughs> you know? And you're like, uh, do we go back to that crazy lifestyle or do we kind of tone it down a little bit? So I'm trying to get my kids to get back to the, I guess, the crazier lifestyle of practicing and making that, that the a priority, thing. So, right. Yeah, but they, they really, you know, the pep band stuff and like that, that national anthem, that was our coming out party to the community to say, like, we're back, music's back. Um, and we're united also. That's another big thing is, is I really want to make sure that the music program's united, that we're supporting each other, that we're supporting the other arts, trying to make sure that my students are going to, um, trying to make sure that they're heading over to the art show and heading to the uh, drama shows as well. That's amazing. And I think, um, I think when I talked to you before, you had said something which I really liked, and I'm going to probably butcher it, but you said there's something for everyone in this music department, right? I mean, there's... Yeah. You've got the serenaders, you've got the choir, you've got the jazz band, you've got, I mean, yeah. there is something for everyone, including the digital music. And can yeah. you talk a little bit about that as well? Because I know that you have students that aren't even in the class that come yeah. and enjoy yeah. your equipment. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, it's fun. I have opened up the music room during lunch times and office hours to anybody um, because I, I don't want to make it exclusively the kids who take, take class during the day. And um, the digital class is wonderful. Um, Tamara Stevens had, had, thought of that idea over guitar because the guitar class was sort of waning in numbers. And she said, you know, there's a lot of people who come in and want to write beats and they want to, you know, use GarageBand and do all this stuff. And then during COVID, um, one of the programs that really worked online was a thing called Sound Soundtrap okay. and um, where kids were creating beats and songs from home. And so I think a lot of kids got excited about the idea of having this class this year. And to be honest, it kind of doubles the size of the music program because we have 20 kids in one class and 19 in another. So it really is as strong as the band is as well, you know? That's so, great. um, and we're having a blast. And what I did was I came in and said, we're going to make it, um, we're going to make it music and film. So we do, we write songs, but we also shoot short stories. We've done newscasts, we've done podcasts. Um, they learn to shoot different camera angles and they learn, you know, all, editing software and all that stuff. Um, the school was gracious enough to um, purchase uh, a large amount of um, MacBook Pros for us so that nice. next year everybody's on the same computer, same version, and um, there's no disparity between people's personal devices, which is such an amazing, amazing thing to just bring it up like, hey, could this ever happen? And then they showed up one day, and it was that... Um, that support is awesome. That's a tangent of one thing I will tell you, you know, for everything that I loved it Tierra Linda and public schools there are other things that I would say I didn't love that I love here and one of those things is being able to kind of cut the red tape and get stuff done a little bit faster mm -hmm. um and yeah when you mentioned that you would really like something it it can happen sometimes a little sooner it's a very so, supportive community I, yes. I I mean they I do love that about Sarah too I feel like there are everybody wants to improve what's already so great. And that's yeah, a really yeah. wonderful thing. Yeah. Um, and so um, I, I also want to bring up the Murphy Music Camps. This year you're going to be offering your um, your camps on the Sarah campus. Can you talk yeah. to us a little bit about that? Yeah. So I started, um, I started these camps. I actually started with a digital, um, it was called uh, Let's Make a Music Video from Scratch Camp through the San Carlos Rec foundation, you know, rec center. Um, and I held it on the Tierra Linda campus, but they let me use the computers and all that stuff. And it was, it was a lot of fun. We had like 20 kids and taught them how to make a music video from scratch. So they were singing and they were doing all the music and everything and shooting the video. Uh, a lot of kids had fun with that. And then, um, I brought it to the district and formed my own company instead of just having the uh, rec center take their cut out of whatever. And then, um, and then decided to add a band and an orchestra camp as well, which we've done for years now. Um, and the title of that was Let's Get Back to Band and Let's Get Back to Orchestra because I know, uh, even from myself when I was in college and high school, you don't play that much during the summer. A lot of kids put their instruments away and don't play. So this was Let's Get Back to It. Let's Get Back to Playing. Let's get these kids ready to go back into the musical classroom in, in a week. And so, um, and I was trying to market it to other middle school teachers to say, look, this isn't just... Uh, a music camp for you to send your kids to to give them something to do i'm trying to make sure that like day one you have a bunch of kids who are ready to go because we Fantastic. all know that slump for the first two or three weeks where the kids are like just getting it going so like send them to me and i'll make sure they're ready to go 
Um, and then we started a choir camp uh, last year with my wife teaching the choir camp. Uh, and what we discovered in the middle of the choir camp was some of those campers really wanted to do the digital music and video side. So we actually decided with the choir camp, they're going to come over and, and kind of to old school, like the first camp was, they're going to make a music video, the singers, We'll make a music video as well as sing in a small ensemble choir and everything. So um, it's the four. It's it's the digital camp and choir camp are the same week, which is this year is July twenty fifth to 29th. and the band and orchestra camp are August first through the fifth. Um, and it's mostly f going into fifth grade through going into ninth grade uh, levels. Okay. And um, we've got wonderful counselors and. Um, and, and this staff. is nine to th it's nine to three, right? Nine, it's gonna to, be nine to three. Okay. It's going to be here. Um, and yeah, and we're trying to branch out because it has been heavily Tierra Linda kids because they'd hear about the camp and they'd want to take the camp with Mr. Murphy. And this sure. community doesn't necessarily know Mr. Murphy as well. So um, I'm really trying to branch out to the middle schools in this area and maybe extend a little bit further north as well and, and just say, look, we're going to we're going to get your kids ready to come back to awesome. school. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And so you can. Um Register for the camp at, is yeah. it Murphy Music? Murphy camps? Music camps dot com. com. That's what I thought. Yeah. I, I didn't know if it was org or com. Yeah. Awesome. So um, anybody interested in that should definitely be sure to Thank visit you. that website. It's yeah. a very good website, very detailed about what you offer. And um, and I guess, I guess lastly, I just want to ask because I, we're so happy to have you here at Sarah. I mean, everybody has been talking about what wonderful things you're doing and um, you're so creative and motivated and it's, it's, it's just wonderful for the program. What can you tell me about just like your experience like today and moving forward, like, what do you hope to achieve here? What do you hope to continue? And what are your, like, maybe three top takeaways from an all-boys uh, Catholic <laughs> high school? <laughs> Those are two, I know, two very, big questions. I know, I just started okay. on my role. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 that's good. <laughs> well, let me up. start with the the boy, the, the all-boy education. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, I've done, this is now 20 years in public school with, um, you know, with, with both, both genders. So I didn't know what to expect. And I have to be honest, after about three weeks of teaching here, you kind of forget. I honestly don't think about that anymore. Um, you know, there is a different energy when the girls come in the room that, you know, the, it's, it's maybe more of an event than it would be at a school where you've got both because you're just used to it. So, um, and I'm sure it's like that when the guys come over to the girls' schools too. Sure. Um, and, uh, but it's really, it, I think it's it's a special thing that the boys have that they can really be themselves. And um, they're goofy and they, they just don't seem to worry about as much as I think they'd worry about if they were, um, you know, worrying about judgment from, from the opposite sex. And so um, that's a really fun thing to see. Uh, and, and they open up to me, I think, a little bit more than they would in another situation. So I, I do appreciate that. Um, and as far as what I see with the program, I, I mean, I told the band kids at the beginning of the year, I said, Hey, you know, we were up in the stands at the football game and we took up two bleachers. I think maybe we kind of extended to a third. And I was like, you guys like three, four years, I want to be conducting down on the floor because all these bleachers are filled. Right. So one way we're doing that next year and they're not necessarily happy about it, but the jazz band is going to join the pep band. Oh, that's great. So um, I, f I feel like they are great players, and they should be seen a lot as well. And some of them are like, oh, no, that's more gigs. and you know. <laughs> but yes, that, so that will already add more numbers to the, uh, to the pep band itself. Um, and so I guess I, I see, um, I just see numbers grow. I, I, I would just like to, I'd like the kids to feel like they have a place like they do in sports here. Um, where they can go and express themselves and be themselves. Um, I never want somebody to feel like they have to take something else to fit in. I, I want to be one of those places where they can fit in no matter who they are. Um, and, you know, as far as I can't, there's a lot of uncontrollables. I don't know who's coming in from year to year. I don't know what their backgrounds are. I don't know what their skill level is. Um, but I, I want to develop sort of a turnkey system that can take that issue every year and set it right so i mean little examples is like a little boot camp at the beginning where the seniors and juniors and maybe even sophomores uh take all the new kids and they're like we are going to show you how we warm up we're going to show you how we play these songs that we play every year uh, for pep band and stuff and like have the older kids branch down and and this is how you play these percussion instruments we didn't know when we came in either mr murphy told us and taught us and now we're teaching you 
And if I can get their help, I think we can get all the new kids up to to par, and then and then we'll see. We'll yeah, see and then, then it becomes kind of a culture, just like yeah. some of the sporting teams we see. You know, it's like the the older Padres helping the younger. So, yeah. You know, I mean, it kind of becomes a cyclical from yeah. that perspective. Well, That's well, nice. we're so happy that you're here. You definitely have your work cut out for you, but I have absolutely every faith that you're going to do it and achieve it quickly. And um, with with huge success and um, for those Padres interested the music department is happening and you are welcome and also for anybody interested in the summer camps um, hurry up registration is, yeah. is uh, happening now and um, thank you so much for joining us we usually end our podcast with a big go Padres so I don't know if you want to sing okay. us out I- <laughs> <laughs> um, go Padres awesome, awesome. that was perfect go Padres okay. <laughs>